Hello. Welcome to That Saints Pod. My name is Patty V. This is Big Easy Nation himself, Mr. Jacob. Time. I got it this time. I got it this time. And we got Dave Rainey still running producer back there in the back. Uh, probably face on screen. I can't see him, but I'm sure he looks beautiful. We got another week of Saints football coming up here. Obviously, yeah. just came out of the preseason. A lot of things to talk about. A lot of topics we got written down. I'm going to throw it to Dave and let him kind of run the show like he did last time. But uh, excited to have you guys with us. And we're going to run through a lot of topics. So let's get it going. All right. We're entering week one of the season, obviously. So I feel like the best place to start right now would be to go over pretty much the state of the roster as it sits after cuts, after the preseason, and just look at what we're going into the season with. So the first thing I wrote down is, I guess this is the receivers we're going into the season with, because that was a big concern we had last week when we talked about positions they might need to add. So I guess overall thoughts on the receiver room right now. Are you comfortable? Do you still think it's a weakness? They didn't really make any additions. I saw they brought in like a bunch of veteran receivers like John Ross, Mm -hmm. uh, Philip Dorsett. Yeah. They didn't bring anybody in, but. Looks like they're looking for speed. Yeah. And yeah somebody was, to be that returner. That was my first thought. Do you think it's because of returner or do you think it's just somebody to bring some speed to stretch the defense? Maybe both. I, I feel like uh, traditionally, I traditionally, you see that Derek Carr really loves the guys that can get over the top. Yeah. So I, I think that that's probably what they're looking for. I love the Philip Dorsett guy and John Ross. I love that they brought Didn't those they guys show in. Interested but, him too, like listen, not- yeah, I was going to say so in 2015, Philip Dorsett was in the draft and as a Miami Hurricanes fan, I loved Philip Dorsett. And I was like pounding the table for Philip Dorsett. <laughs> and it was known that Sean Payton really, really liked them at the time. Now Sean Payton's gone, but you know, nine years later, we might eventually be right. <laughs> We're getting there. Uh, you you asked about like if it's returner. They did bring in that returner from the Vikings. Mm-hmm. So maybe they are somewhat looking for a returner. They brought in somebody from the XFL. I did see. Yeah, XFL's leading receiver. Yep. Hmm. I, miss, some, I missed that. Yeah, put some respect on his name. <laughs> uh does it does it make you does it con- or does it make you concerned about like Shahid's health at all that they're bringing in another speedster? I know he's supposed to be ready for week 1. I don't think so. Patty? No, no, I don't think so. I agree. I thought you were going to elaborate because you said something last week and I thought you were going to go back into it. I think that it just opens the door for them to use him as a real wide receiver, right? Like you you mentioned it last week. So so shout out to you for that. Um, And in my brain, I was like, I mean, I don't think it matters. He's still a third string wide receiver. You can let him return kicks. But, you know, if if, if he can stay healthy and just run as a wide receiver and be that weapon on offense, maybe play out of the backfield a little bit. Yeah, it definitely gives him snaps in other areas where maybe he can be more impactful. I know they say that the kick return, like you can still be impactful. Listen, I don't. Mm-hmm. Kick return's weird now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's it's move past that. Definitely going to be something to get used to. Yeah. The new rule. I still think you'll see him in a kick returner role, like in crucial situations. Like our yeah. special teams mm-hmm. coach was the one that said he thinks you'll see players like Kamara and Tyreek Hill and things like that in the kick returner role in like fourth quarter post game situations, which even in that situation, I don't know that I love Kamara on the kickoffs, but although people keep saying, I kind of want to see Taysom Hill return yeah, the kick. People keep saying like, you don't want to have your big time players take these hits, mm-hmm. but I'm wondering if big hits are even going to still be a thing on kickoffs. Like the way it's set up, nobody's really getting the run and start like they were before. So I think those huge hits are going to start being eliminated. Well, and to be fair, on the kickoffs, I don't think the huge hits really happened on the ball carriers most of the time, right? Like, it was a lot of the guys that were running downfield looking to, just looking to lay the wood on other guys that were standing around with their head net in the sky. Like, people were just getting taken out, trying to block or, you know, trying to go run down and make a play. Um, So I think that's really what they took out of the game. Yeah, I love the idea of having a Camara or or someone electric back there in big moments. I mean, people have done it through the years all the time. Like Reggie Bush was back there in big moments all the time. He was he yeah. wasn't the full time punt returner or kick returner, but you know, when it came crunch time, they'd throw him back there and he'd make plays. Yeah. I mean it's a it's a difference maker, right? Like you talk about Reggie Bush. I think back immediately to the like the Cardinals playoff game the year of the Super Bowl. Like mm-hmm. that that almost essentially won the game for us at that point. Um yeah, I think I I know you keep kind of like shooting down this new kick return thing, but I think it could end up making a difference. Oh, yeah, I think it will. I hope so, because I hate it right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to keep beating that drum. Yeah, yeah. The next obvious thing to talk about, 
on the depth chart is we're going into the season apparently with two QB twos, much to the dismay of Saints Twitter or parts of Saints Twitter. Let's talk about that at first. Does it bother you at all that they haven't come out and named a backup specifically? I will say it is good that they're letting them compete. They're not giving one guy just the green light, like, okay, you're QB2. So they're still actively competing for the job and bettering themselves as a potential QB2. Yeah. So, but then again, it's like, you got to name one at some point. So, do you? Um, I mean, technically, like game days, you have to yeah. name a, a backup quarterback for headset purposes. But at the end of the day, I think there, there was something I saw. It might have been Underhill who said it earlier. It probably was. He's a smart guy. He said something along the lines of like, look, these guys know who the backup quarterback is right now. Oh. Like they, the players know it. The coaches know it. But they're just not going to name it because they they want competition. And yep. I, I think competition is a great thing. I don't think it really matters. We talked about this last week. It didn't matter who got named QB2. It wasn't going to matter going into like it's going to matter if Derek Carr gets hurt. That's the moment it's going to matter. Mm-hmm. So I don't care. Yeah, it doesn't bother me either. I just like people kept making such a big deal about it, like how he said he, they they're going to compete throughout the season, and I'm like, isn't that what you want? Yeah. Like, why does it like to be to be fair? Like, I don't want Spencer Rattler getting that much more snaps than Jake Hayner throughout the season until he like really separates himself, right? Or vice versa, like. They should be, they should be competing throughout the whole season. I know we're pushing the Rattler agenda, but it's not as big of a gap right now as people are making it out to be, at least in my opinion. And and I know we want Rattler because of the ceiling, but you you've talked about it before, Pat. J- Jake Hayner has something, right? So yeah. like, you got to continue to get him reps, and you're in a very unique situation where you have two really young backup quarterbacks that could potentially be starters and yeah. i think you got to continue to get them reps who cares what they're listing on the depth chart and like i said last week i i, I thought i thought jay Hayner would be listed as the second quarterback mm-hmm. but i i said specifically like this doesn't it's not going to matter and like you said when when or if their car goes down then it matters and then we'll know and the good thing is if they're both getting reps they'll both be just as prepared. Yeah. So I think too, I think people forget how young Jake Hayner is. You just said it like Jake Hayner's played for one year. Mm-hmm. He's been in the league for one year and this is, this is both their first year. Everybody's first year in this offense. Right. But like he showed good things last year. He showed good things this year. He gets the ball out quick. There's a lot of good things he does. So it's like, you can't just cast him to the side and, and hand it to hand it to Rattler just because he's got the name and the moxie and the swag. And, and like, there were plenty of teams that would take, Jake Hanner in a heartbeat sure. to be their backup. So, yeah. 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 You know, there's just, it's just, yeah, you you're in a good situation, like you said, yeah. you're having them too. There's just certain groups on Twitter and Instagram that we've seen, you know, they're going to take every chance they get to take shots at the team right now. And, you know, there, there's, it's a deeper conversation of people like pulling against Derek Carr, which, you uh, know, I know that's, I know that's a fun thing to do, but, like I don't, it doesn't make sense to me, mm-hmm. right? Like if you really, if you're a fan of the team, you shouldn't be pulling against Derek Carr. Like, I don't know. I don't really want to dive too much into that because <laughs> I feel like we we have before, and it's a yeah. Keep it moving. It's a gross conversation, really. Other things that kind of stood out on the depth chart: Taysom Hill is officially no longer listed as a quarterback. He is a tight end, mm-hmm. which we've talked last week about how fun that role could be. Any anything else that stood out from you to y'all on the the depth chart that you think is interesting? Too much. Um, no, personally, no. There's nothing maybe. crazy to me. I think swinging, like trading for a D tackle, surprised me a little bit. I think it was good. I mean, you got Saunders who was out yeah. for a couple of weeks, yeah. and then you bring in Ridgeway, who's probably going to fill in. And when Saunders comes back, then you'll have yeah, that yeah competition, yeah. but. I don't dislike it. I just, I think it surprised me. I didn't realize Saunders was as hurt as he is, I guess. I don't know how long he was out for. Like, yeah. Two, three weeks or. I can't remember. But yeah, I mean, hey, it is what it is. That was the only thing that really surprised me. I think letting go of Abram, I know we're not really talking cuts. Letting go of, now he's back, but letting mm-hmm. go of Abram, I thought he'd make the official roster. I'm, I'm I thought st- they brought him back to the uh, 53. They brought him back to the 53. Uh, he's on a practice squad. Practice squad. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. 
I thought you were giving me some news. I was like, what? I missed out. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, I think that leads me to the point that I said last week. I still don't know like what we're doing at safety, which mm -hmm. is we're probably going to get into another topic here. So I'll stop. But yeah. 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 Touching on the uh, defensive tackle thing. I think that's one of those positions with Dennis Allen where he just wants to have a bunch of guys that he can rotate, keep fresh. Like even this year, you're going to see Cam kick in there. That's another body that I'm assuming you're going to see Cam kick in more than he has in the past. Um, and I, like we got five, six guys there right now. And I legitimately think you could see all five or six every single game. I think it's a deep position, probably one of the positions of strength on this team. I guess it's a news story this week. Kamara's house goes up for sale. You know, do with that information with what you will. He says he's going to live with Matt Bowers. So that's his answer to the situation. Uh, but I think the Kamara situation is a bigger conversation to be had. Uh, he doesn't have a contract for next season. Or, yeah, he doesn't have a contract for next season. I guess to start the conversation, would you pay him? I would. Because who do you have on your roster that's better than right. you know, anybody mm -hmm. in I mean, you could draft a guy, but you don't know if he's going to reach that potential. So, yeah, I think I think it's going to be difficult to. I'll be completely honest. He's twenty nine. He'll be thirty going into next year. He's a running back. That's that's an uphill battle for him, regardless of of who he is. Right? You look around the league at the contracts some of these other guys have, and what he's probably going to want. It's going to be very difficult to to bring him back at some of those numbers. I think absolutely you try to bring him back, but I I don't. I don't, it depends how that negotiation process goes. And I think that him listing his house, my brain instantly went, man, this could be the last year we see Alvin Kamara in a Saints uniform just because sometimes numbers don't work out. Right. And that's kind of where I like where my brain's at with that. But, you know, I hope they can bring him back. He's, he's been electric and uh, I think he's in for a big season. So he's probably going to command a lot more money. <laughs> so we'll see. Especially with the new offense with the Kubiak and, you know, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Fun fact, he is still the second highest paid running back in the league. Is that surprising to you? Yeah. I, I know that the listen, the league has has made it loud and clear like they're not paying running backs anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're even seeing teams like nobody's even a, a RB1 anymore. Like no teams even have one official guy that they're like, this is our guy. I mean, a couple, right? Like you have McCaffrey, yeah. Derrick Henry, I guess. Yeah, it's Saquon. Saquon, maybe. I mean, we don't even know what that backfield looks like coming yeah. into this season. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. So it does surprise me. But at the same time, I think that's you're, you're seeing the league go that way where guys just aren't getting paid as a running back. Yeah, it's it's the top three are McCaffrey, Kamara, and Jonathan Taylor. McCaffrey's at $19 million a year, which, you know, he's lived up to that and more, I sure. think. Whether it's all him, the team he's on, not to say he's not talented, obviously. But, you know, there is a, there's a difference between what K McCaffrey's been playing with and what, Kamara's been playing with. Um, yeah, I, I hope they pay him. If So I think this year is going to be telling because I think we've talked about it in the past. I don't think he's been the issue with his lack of production. You know, I guess to, a, to an extent, he has to be somewhat responsible, but I don't think he's been put in the best positions to succeed the last few years. And I think, and I've, I've been saying this, if I was him, I'm just I'm just waiting this season out. He said that in the video too. Yeah, uh, he's interviewed by Fletcher Mackle. And, yeah, I'm just yeah. wait. I'm waiting he's this still, season out not because up, but he's waiting until this season's over. And right, because if if this if this system goes the way we think it's going to go, he could have a monster season. And then if it's not the Saints that are going to pay him, somebody will. Oh yeah, because he like he you know he's 29. He, 30 is that number right that we look at with running backs, but he's. He's got a couple injuries, right? But he's he doesn't have a ton of mileage on him. He had one season where he was like really a bell cow. The other ones, he he was hurt and didn't play a full season. So, like, I still think he's got a couple. I don't think he's got five really good years left. But if if Derrick Henry can still get paid at his age and the miles he has on him, I think Alvin Kamara can still have some real value to somebody. Whether it's the Saints that pay him, I don't know. Uh, I would hope so, because like you said, nobody is on the team has proven that they can take over that role yet. I think they 
drafted somebody with that in mind and it hasn't worked out yet. We'll we'll see there. But yeah, man, I don't I don't know what you like you're not paying them another 15 million a year, I don't think. Right. I'm thinking more like seven or eight. Yeah. Seven or yeah. seven Which or is, eight puts you in the Tony Pollard DeAndre Swift range. Which feels low if Camara is good. <laughs> it does. It does feel low, but eight to ten, seven. But Tony there. Pollard, how's Tony? How's how old is Tony Pollard? He's around that twenty-seven. Age. He's 27. Yeah, okay, okay, all right. Derek, younger. Derek Henry got eight million. That feels fair. Yeah. What did Saquon get from Saquon? Like Saquon eight? got twelve and a 12. half. Okay. I'm way off. Saquon. Just, get, that's nuts. I'm, I'm sorry. I know that's not Saints related, but. Paying somebody that's injured as much as Saquon, 12 and a half, is kind of kind of crazy. Also, how the hell can the Eagles keep affording these people? <laughs> but anyway, so I guess that's the Camaro situation. Mm-hmm. Let's uh let's start transitioning into week one and rest let's of get it. and rest of the season. We'll start with MVPs of the season. We'll do one offense, one defense, or you know, if you got a couple guys on offense or a couple guys on defense, shout them out. So who are your who are your MVPs of the season? Who has the best season for each side of the ball? Jacob, you start. I think offense, Chris Olave. He said he wants to be an elite receiver, top five. So I think he he can definitely be offensive MVP. Defense, I think, Demario. And under the radar, definitely Chase Young. Yeah. I mean, you saw how he was in preseason if he stays healthy. I would also like Chris Olave to be a wide receiver one. <laughs> For what it's worth, that would be nice. <laughs> well, it would it sure would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. I, I, listen, I think he's got a great opportunity too. That my my offensive MVP might be kind of off the wall here. I might ruffle some feathers. I think Derek Carr has to be your offensive MVP, right? I know that sounds crazy, uh, but if you look back at last year, I saw a stat earlier. He was the number six quarterback in the league for adjusted. Ah, shit, what's that stat? That metric. It's failing me right now. My brain's not working. EPA. Adjusted EPA, he was the number six quarterback in the league. That's insane to me. Hmm. Looking back at last year and how horrible it felt, and granted, you can you can say what you want about oh, he yelled at his you know teammates. Okay, great. It's it's football. Have you played football? I've yelled at my teammates when I played football. I've also played quarterback, and it was listen. I've had those same conversations publicly, and listen, I'm a bad person. It's fine. You got to get through it, and I think that he's got the talent, he's got the brain, he's got the skills. Like he can physically and mentally put together a good season. And I think that he has to be the MVP of the offense. It's not that he will be. I think that he absolutely has to be. Yeah. My next question was going to be like most important players. And that's kind of what you're touching on. He absolutely is the most important player on offense. Like you can make an an argument that it is like the O-line just overall. Right. But it it doesn't, if, even if the O-line is good, if Derek Carr is terrible, then the season is, is over yeah. unless Spencer Rattler or Jay Hayner come in and set the world on fire. Right. But the, the chances of that happening are very slim. Did you, did you have anybody on defense? You know, the name that just keeps coming to me for whatever reason is Brian Br- Brzee. I was going to say the same yeah. thing. Yeah. I, I just feel like if he can step it up and be a monster, like he's going to unlock so much for that defense. If that'll instantly unlock the pass rush, which is going to help everything else. Not that the defense needed help, but Man, talk about another level. Yeah, I think to Jacob's point, I think if it is him, it's because of Chase Young. Yeah. I think Chase Young is going to get so much attention that, like you saw it already in the preseason, like you said, it's going to free up Brzee so much. And he's also added this nasty little spin move mm-hmm. that we kept seeing in the yeah. preseason, which if if he's hitting moves like that at that size, that's exciting. That's very, he, he got Chase Young literally running over yeah. O-linemen. Yeah, I love Chase Young. I can't even front. Yeah, man. It's kind of, it's one of those ones where it's like, I can't believe this guy plays for the Saints, you know? <laughs> like, it was funny reading comments. Like, people were like, is he, I can't believe he's on the Saints. Like, yeah, <laughs> there were a number of people that were like, oh, Chase Young is a Saint. Yeah. That's a fun game I like to play. Patty knows of <laughs> Save Faces, New Places. <laughs> That's definitely one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if Chase has a huge year, like, would y'all pay him? Like, would y'all break the bank for, yeah, I mean, what is a huge year? I mean, yes, you try to. Yeah. But if you find a pass rusher that's electric, I think yeah. you have to try and pay him, especially with our history. That, Come on, man. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, you got to pay. This this team has struck out time and time again drafting pass rushers 
if you get one in the building and listen, if you can afford them, right? Because if he comes out and gets like what 13, 14 sacks, like something crazy, mm-hmm. you got to break the bank for him. Yeah. Definitely. But, but like, can you? Mm-hmm. Like, and we do this thing with the cap, right? Where we all say it's not real. There is numbers that they can't pay. Like, regardless of what we think of the cap, there is numbers that they can reach that they can't afford. But I'm with I'm with Patty. If he if if he hits, you can't let him walk out the building. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You, no, go ahead. I, I just back to the cap thing because I always have to comment on it. You're gonna have to show me those numbers. I'll be honest with you, because there is always a way. There always has been a way. There always will be a way. And I know that people are, I can't kick the can forever. Well, they kind of have. And other teams have. And other teams have been able to quickly reset in one year. I mean, like, there's ways. You I figure th- it out. I think I look at it as they they have two approaches right now with the way they operate. Either they can make their one splash signing and then get kind of like bottom of the barrel guys at what they think is value or get like a Chase Young and that they can get on the cheap, right? Or they can get multiple middle ground guys. I think if they did have more cap room, you would see them maybe get two or three splash signings. You know, like I think they can get who they want to get right now, but I, I also look at it as if they did actually have more room, imagine what they could do. Like, you can't tell me that if they had more cap room, they wouldn't be able to add more. Like, that's just a, it's just a fact that, I think they would do they would do what they do now, just even to a greater extent. With I don't think players. so. I disagree. I think that sometimes it comes down to recruiting. I think they've been in position to sign a lot of top guys, and top guys chose to go other places. Like we were going to pay people, and they just chose to go elsewhere. Yeah, I I guess I like you're not, you're not wrong about like they don't they get who they want to get, but I like I imagine in years past there's been. Like when they sign like one big guy, I imagine there's been multiple people they want to go after yeah. and they just can't. Potentially. Like, or, or you're looking at, look at like the season we lost Trey, Trey Hendrickson. Like in that season, if you had more cap space, mm-hmm. you're keeping all those guys, right? Like you didn't have to make that decision to let him walk. You know, like there's things like that. Yeah. Like maybe it comes down to keeping that, more of their own people. That happens. So than, that happens on every team, though. Of course. That's going to happen on every team. And if I say my thoughts on that, I'm going to have an angry Dylan McNeely yeah. in my inbox later. Oh, so. we are, you know, I'm on the, we're on the same page <laughs> with that. Um, Love you, Dill. Yeah. That's uh, right. I called you Dill. <laughs> if I had, I didn't really give my MVPs. I feel like y'all kind of, kind of touched on it. Just to go with a different name on defense. I don't know. I actually don't, like, I don't really have a different name. I think it's like DeMario feels like a, a good pick. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say Marshawn, but I don't I don't. You could say Tyran. Yeah, that's that was what I was thinking because of the lack of like safety depth on paper. I feel like he's gonna have to have a big season. I was gonna say Marshawn, but like we just talked about it, I'm starting to wonder how important he actually is. I guess time will tell with that. On offense, I'm gonna go. I'm going with Alvin for my MVP. I really think that this this scheme is gonna. Give us a glimpse of what we we missed over the last couple of years, and I think he's coming out with something to prove. And granted, you know, all this is like barring health, right? Like if he stays healthy, I think Alvin is going to have a, a monster year. Under the radar guy, I don't even know. Like, give me Pete Werner. Yeah, like Pete, that's probably a good pick on offense. Like I could see like Jawan or even even Taysom, like having a mm-hmm. a really good offensive season. Because like I'm, I'm looking, I'm trying to think of like who shines on San Francisco's team, like what positions. And granted, you know we don't have. I'm blanking on the tight end's name. What's his name? On San Francisco, yeah. George Kittle. George Kittle. Yeah, like we don't we don't necessarily have a George Kittle, right? But like, you know, if Taysom is in a role like that, I think mm-hmm. Taysom could easily be like a yeah a George Kittle. Oh yeah. So Taysom can be whatever the heck Taysom <laughs> wants to be. First of all, <laughs> look, I need I I know he's like. Did y'all see the interview with Dennis Allen and Kay Adams? Yeah. <laughs> like when his face lit up when she asked him about putting t- Taysom on defense, I was like, he's thought about it. And oh. now, I, now I need it. Like, and I saw somebody on Twitter say that if Taysom goes like ends his career with what the stats he has now and like a pick six, 
and uh, like a sack fumble for a touchdown, he has to go into the Hall of Fame. Just for being the yeah. first person to have a touchdown <laughs> in like every form or fashion. Feels like a dude that you just built in the 20s, like yeah. 1920s football. Here he is. Yeah, best player. Absolutely. All right, let's start transitioning into week one. Yeah. Saints play the Panthers in the Dome on Sunday. I haven't looked at the line. I'm assuming four and a half. favorite. Yeah, four okay. and a half. Or it was four and a half. I think it's four now. It's moved a little bit. Okay, yeah. I assumed that the Saints were favorites. Think what you want about the Saints. The Panthers should be a worse team than the Saints mm-hmm. all season. They do have a new head coach and Dave Canales. Uh, I guess their big free agent signing would be Deontay Johnson or trade. I don't remember exactly how they got him. You're going in the year two of Bryce Young. Do the Panthers concern you more this year than they did last year at all? Or are you still kind of looking like this is a team we should beat handedly? I think we should beat them handedly, but I think they did kind of get a little better. I mean, they up, they got, uh, they made a few splash signings, getting two guards in free agency. And other than that, I really. Yeah. I think I expect them to be better, first of all, because you can't be much worse. Mm -hmm. Uh, They were pretty bad last year. Bryce Young was pretty bad last year, so I expect him to be better. In his one preseason start, he actually looked really, really good. Canales did a great job in Tampa. I mean, Baker looked good last year. They've looked good in the past. The offense has always run smooth. So I actually expect their offense to look formidable. Now, the Saints defense is pretty good, so we'll see how that matchup plays out. I've heard, and I admittedly haven't looked too much into it, I've heard Carolina's defense is still pretty suspect. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. Especially not having Burns. Yeah. yeah their, to him. their cornerback situation I've read is not great. Like they went and signed, they put like all their waiver claims in on the top cornerbacks. I think they got three different ones and they asked Dave Canales and he was like, yeah, the guys we had, did what they did and we're still looking for more guys. <laughs> it oh was basically <laughs> was basically his quote. Like they have horn. Yeah. Right. But like outside of that, I think their their cornerback situation is not great. So offense, if the offense is going to shine, this should be the game. And you know, we'll we'll see if they if they do. So I mean, do you like, get predictions? Do, you, do we win? Do we think we win? Do we cover? Because okay. you know what? Good teams win. But what do great teams do, Patty? They cover. That's right. Great teams cover. <laughs> yes, we win. I mean, of course we win. I'm a Saints fan, and I'm a realist, Saints. and I, I believe we win. Saints have the longest active week one win streak at five wins. Yeah, Jacob was saying that earlier, right before he walked in. Five wins is is, is impressive. Maybe saying it out loud jinxes a little bit, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's kind of funny because it, it feels like not that long ago, right? Like where we were in this situation where we couldn't win week one. I saw the Colts haven't won a week. One we are the like Tigers. Ten years, <laughs> ten seasons. Sorry, the Colts haven't won yeah. in ten seasons. Sorry, I was making an LSU joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think they win. I think they cover like four four points. I mean, I know. Listen, Vegas knows a lot more than I do, so. I'm sure some wonky stuff will happen, but yeah, I'm expecting a big game. I mean, do we want to get into keys to the game or anything? Cause if not, I'll just start talking about what, I, why I think it's be a big game. Yeah. That was going to be my next question. Keys to the game. So just tell me why you yeah. think they win and what, what needs to happen for them to win. I think keys to the game. I think the saints win and I think they went through the running game. I, I'm a, we can probably do keys to the game every week. And my keys to the game are always going to be the trenches every single time. I'm going to yeah. be like the offensive line and the defensive line. Cause I was born in the fifties. Um, not really. But yeah, I think that's going to be the keys to the game, especially with their D-line, their defense in general being kind of banged up. It seems like our focus this year is definitely going to be run heavy and then, you know, pass out of that, you know, set up some play action, set up some misdirection, things like that. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's going to be a big part of it. Pass rush on, on Bryce Young, see what happens there. But I think the Saints do win. I think they do get pressure. And I think they run the ball really well. That's it. I pretty much agree. Yeah. Nailed it. No. Definitely a run game and go. Yeah, I think you just yeah. gotta you I think if we get Bryce you get Bryce Young under pressure. Like I, I think it all works out from there. Now they do still have Adam Thielen who notably <laughs> gives yeah. Is Marshawn playing? That's what I'm wondering. If not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like as bad as that yeah. that's it's, that's Marshawn's kryptonite. Yeah, he's like the one guy that I could think of off the top of my head that just always gives <laughs> him trouble. Now, like, does he match up against Deontay Johnson instead? I don't think so, because I think Marshawn is going to make it a point to be like, oh, nah, yeah. I'm on Adam Thielen. But no, I think if you get 
you know, if you get Bryce Young pressure pressured, that that's the major key. And then just like controlling the ball, right? Like the, like you said, keys to the game every week could legitimately be the same thing mm-hmm. week in, week out. Because football's a simple game to to an extent. I'm t- right. If I was a head coach, it would be trenches and don't turn the ball over. Yeah. Win the turnover battle. <laughs> like especially, it's the same answer every week. Especially when you're the, like, should be the better team. We, like, if you don't turn the ball over and what's it, what's another cliche? Don't give up big plays. Like, <laughs> you know, control the line. Don't give up big plays. Don't yeah. turn the ball over. That's the keys. If you got any other keys to the game, you're just looking for something. Three facets. All three facets. <laughs> yeah. Just dominate. Uh, don't give up the big plays on special teams. <laughs> like, <laughs> win the field position battle. What else we got? <laughs> there you go. Pretty much nailed them. Uh, we, I did see that we brought in some punters, but didn't sign any. So, you know, Lou Headley better count his days. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But yeah, don't commit stupid penalties. What else we got? Yeah, it's That's basically it, it. It's really simple. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's not a ton else you need to be that needs to be said there. I don't really have anything else from that I had written down. If y'all have something else you want to talk about, um, do we have anything else? I, don't, I think that's really it. I mean, hey, listen, we could go through game by game. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Obviously, big game against Carolina coming up. The dome's been renovated. Do we have any thoughts on that? Have you seen it? Did you? Did either of you make it's it to a, a preseason room. game? So the locker room was. Oh yeah, Club Dove. Really cool. Yep. I didn't make it to a preseason game, but I did make it to like when we went to Garth Brooks. There, half the dome was done. Mm-hmm. So I'm was, assuming the other half is. You know, that was a year ago. No way. That was a year ago, bro. Garth Brooks? <laughs> that was a year ago. That was the kickoff for the college football season last year. Wow. <laughs> so there's been a lot more work done since then. I have I'm excited to I'm excited to pop in and see what it looks like. I won't be there this Sunday, but, but yeah. I will be. I'll be there. Heck yeah. Let me um, know what it's like. Did you did y'all want to touch on like anything league wide? Like any any big games you're interested in this weekend i mean nfl's back yeah nfl's back i mean listen we kick off thursday fantasy football is back in full swing i know that this is a saints pod we can still touch on fantasy football here and there right like i'm not going to bore you with okay. who's on my fantasy team we, we can do this because this is something we used to do on our pre-games that mm-hmm. ethan does and he'll probably still do them we used to give an anytime touchdown score okay every week for the saints games it can be from the either saints team. games yeah he, okay. he well he did he would do we would do anybody from the Sunday because he was doing a pro a pregame kickoff was about to start. So we did the Sunday, but since this is the saints pod mm-hmm. and he'll probably focus on that on Sunday, give me a anytime touchdown score for the saints game. It can be from either team. If you want. Mm. Chuba Hubbard. Okay. I see you going the heel route. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. What you got Jacob. Uh, Taysom. Taysom. Uh, that, that's fair. That is fair. I'm going to I'm going to take the easy route and say Alvin. <laughs> like listen, I'm going to bang the table for Alvin this year until like I'm proven wrong. Cuz I I I'm I'm expecting big things from him. Um that's all we really got season overall kicks off Thursday, so this by Thursday. the time you're hearing this tomorrow, mm-hmm. uh Ravens and Chiefs and then Sunday. Yeah, we got a Friday game too. You got the Eagles and playing down in Brazil. Wow. Oh yeah, that game where they're not supposed to wear green. I forgot about that. Weird. Did you hear about that? Do y'all know about that? No, it's just weird. All of it's weird. <laughs> they can't wear. It. So there was a post going around. We can just we'll end it with this. There was a post going around like when they announced that game, and it's true that they're not supposed like the fans shouldn't wear green, and it was, everyone was like, "Oh, it's gang related." What it is is they're playing in the stadium the soccer stadium mm-hmm. and this team that plays there, I forget who it is, but their biggest rival wears green. And you know how soccer uh, fans are in other parts of the country. That's a no, no. Yeah. So, but oddly enough, both teams are green. <laughs> so like, I don't, I don't know what they're supposed to do there. White out, I guess. Yeah. White and yellow. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. <laughs> um, that's all. That's all the stuff I got. So if you don't have anything yeah. else, Patty, wrap us up. No, that's it. Appreciate you guys. Stay tuned. Tune in every week. Follow us at Be in the Know. Obviously, follow at Big Easy Nation. Thank you, Jacob, for being on. He'll be on every week, I assume. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate your knowledge and all that, all that good stuff. So, yeah, we'll see y'all next week. We're going to continue to do these previews, and then obviously, as we get going, we'll we'll cover the game before, and there'll be a little bit more content. There was nothing that happened this past week, so we're just kind of grasping at some things this week. But yeah, yeah, that's it. That's all we got. Um, until next time, appreciate you. Who that? Who that?